Good evening, and thank you for joining Gather at Home for the short history of The Long Road. If you have maximized your screens to watch the movie, please go ahead and take this time to minimize. Also, please make sure to fill out the audience ballot to rate how you feel the movie went. This evening, I am pleased to announce Annie Simon Kennedy, the director of The Short History of the Long Road, is going to moderate our panel this evening, and we welcome Annie today. Hi, everybody. I'm Ani, and here on my phone is Jay Sean St. John, who plays Blue in the movie. She's joining us from South Dakota. And uh, thank you so much for watching our movie around the world. Uh, we were watching a, a live map, and there's people watching in every single continent outside of Antarctica. And this is not the release we ever thought this movie would have, but it's amazing to see so many people joining in from all over the world. And a big thank you to Gather, the platform that's hosting us tonight, and to our film distributor, FilmRise, for organizing this event. Um, and a very, very special thanks to everyone who donated to the Movement for Black Lives when you purchased a ticket. Um, if you haven't donated yet, we hope that you do um, consider supporting this organization, especially during this crucial time in here in our world right now. And so tonight we're going to have a little Q&A and joining us, we have myself, the writer director, Jay Sean, who plays Blue, and Sabrina Carpenter, our lead, Nola, Maggie Siff, who plays Cheryl, Stephen Ogg, who plays Clint, and Danny Trejo, who plays Miguel. So I'm going to introduce everybody and uh, ask a few questions. And if you have any questions, uh, throw them in the chat box. And if you give it a thumbs up, we'll turn it over to the audience and stick around because at the very end, we have a special blooper reel for you. So my first question is for Sabrina. Um, how did you join this project in the first place? And what was the casting process like? And uh, what did you connect to about Nola's character when you first read the script? This is so funny having you ask me these questions because I feel like you probably know more about how I was cast than I do. But I also just vividly remember our first, uh, well, the first things first was I, was I read the script and I, I think I, I fell in love with the simplicity and complexity of Nola as a character. Um, and then just the story overall being one that I haven't really uh, heard told yet for, for a young woman my age. Um, just kind of in general, uh, van dwelling wasn't really a life that I was super aware of and then became so interested in. And uh, I remember you and I had like our first FaceTime and the sparks were just a fly in and the, the chemistry was out of the park. And, um, and then we met in person and you were like, can you not wear makeup, not shave and dye your hair brown? And can we make a movie? And I was like, yeah. And <laughs> it didn't go like exactly like that, but it was very similar to that. And, um, and then we made this perfect little movie in Albuquerque for a month. And I just have the, the fondest memories of, of the entire cast and crew and that entire experience being something that I really, really learned um, and, and grew a lot from. Um, and Nola as a character, I feel one that will always be very special to me. And the fact that it's finally out in the world is, is very, very cool. Yeah, I remember uh, our first FaceTime and oh my God. you would just move into your house and you were just sitting in a room surrounded by boxes. And I was like, I think I think she'll be able to pull this off. She, she knows what it's like to be on the road. Box, yep. As you can see, I've, I have a lot of decor since. <laughs> right. Uh, this so next fun. question is for Danny. Um, tell us a little bit about how you came on board and um, how did you connect to Miguel, um, who's such a, a tough guy on the outside, but is actually very open-hearted? 
you know, my son Gilbert gave me the script. And he said, Dad, check this out. And uh, I uh, I really like the character of M Miguel because, first of all, I didn't kill anybody. And usually, like, I'm dying or getting killed or shooting somebody. And it was just a real, uh, it showed a real want to be hard guy, but really had a big heart. And uh, I really like that about the character. And uh, I, when I found out that it was a kind of like an all female crew, I, I, I'd never, I'd never worked with a, with a whole, you know, female kind of, kind of film. And, and it wasn't a chick flick, but, but it was a, it was a great movie. I really enjoyed working with Anna, Ani and, uh, and uh, Sabrina was like cool. It's a great actress. <laughs> really surprised me. You know, I got to say nothing against Disney or nothing. You know, but because they're but most of the kids that I've worked with that that come out of a, a that genre, you know, like uh, uh, you got to kind of like pull them aside and just choke them a little bit, you know, and tell them hey, lighten up, but. But she was just amazing, you know, just all the way around, totally professional and uh, and just really, really cool to work with. I really, it was a, you know what, it was, that goes down as one of the, one of the top five experiences of my movie career. Yeah. Danny, top five out of like a million too. That's, that is a <laughs> compliment. I mean that. And you rock. You you really. Likewise, the the, the feelings mutual. Um, Stephen, question for you. Um, so Clint, Nola's father is a magnetic guy. He's got a very unique philosophy on life, on parenting. Um, you jumped into this Q and A last minute because you were camping off the grid in the most Clint like fashion. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like playing him and and showing sort of the, both the pros and the cons of, of his worldview? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I, I think I would uh, agree with Danny. It was nice not to kill people or be killed. <laughs> we both have we seem to be in worlds where we uh, do that a lot. Uh, and so, I mean, the beauty of it and the script and the entire process was uh, this kind of philosophy that feeds into to who Clint was and what he believed. And it was, I don't want to say a simple way of living, but there was a simplicity to it that I loved. And that that was both for Clint and his lifestyle, the van living lifestyle. And also the film, it was just so lovely to be uh, involved in the project that just had to do with essentially human connection because that's what van life and living and that philosophy is all about is just about this human connection, uh, which I loved. Now the downside of that is it's as obviously apparent uh, that uh, when you have a certain lifestyle, uh, a certain philosophy, a certain religion, um, it's an interesting thing to, to, to a child obviously doesn't have a choice, right? So you're just sort of passing along what you feel is best in the world. Um, but I think, you know, with Clint, it comes from a really good place. It comes from a beautiful place. It comes from a place of love and, um, and it was, it was just, again, this simplistic thing I come back to, which was the most beautiful thing that I enjoyed about it. Did that even answer the question? I love, I can go around and around and around. That was great. And then realize. No, I love that. Like what? This next one is for Jay Sean. Um, so your character, Blue, um, is living through some really difficult circumstances, um, but she has this inner strength, um, even though she, it takes 
her meeting Nola for them to really sort of develop this bond. Um, so how did you approach um, the character and sort of how, how did you develop her inner life? Yeah, um, well, I was, you know, Blue is an indigenous person and like, likewise, like, like me, like myself. And I feel like as an indigenous person, you have a lot of resilience in you and, you know, everyone goes through hardships, but it's like, you have to like, look at the positive side of things and just know that things will get better. And I feel like that's what she was doing with like, you know, like with like Nola and with other people in her life. Like she was, you know, looking at the better side of things instead of what was actually going on in her life. And it was really easy for her to create a friendship. Maggie, Cheryl is um, a rare character in movies. Um, uh, a mom who made a really hard but sort of essential choice for herself and now years later has to re-examine um, that path that she took. Um, so what was it like for you playing with these different nuances when she meets Nola again and in a way for the first time? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh you know, when we first got this, when I first got the script, show was written really differently. And then we started working on it. Um, and Ani, your conception of the character really changed. You wanted to make her a lot more complex because in the original script, she was sort of, um, she was an alcoholic and she was really lost uh, in her life. And instead we started with a woman who really seemed like grounded in her life. Um, but reckoning with a series of decisions that she made as a younger person. So I, I felt like it was this really ongoing exploration that you and I had while we were shooting it. And, you know, also really trying to figure out the nuances of a woman who has tried to stand by her choice, you know, believing that she probably made the right choice to give her child away at the same time living with the pain of that choice and that separation and all the questions of what could have been or what would have been. And, you know, just really trying to find the balance um, within a character who's really like pretty steady in herself. And so like, I think what we were playing with was a lot of like uh, hot and cold and uh, warm and unsure. And it was, it was, I feel like the, the thing that we were looking to inhabit was sort of, or the thing that I was looking to inhabit was was pretty um, like subtle and not not obvious. Um, and so I, I feel like when we were working on the film, I was just trying to give Ani, who's a wonderful director, a lot of choices so that she could ultimately decide what she needed at the end of the day. Thanks, Maggie. No, but that was something that was such a gift to be able to, I mean, you had such um, an incredible sort of clarity about this character. And and I really feel like, you know, the all of Cheryl's scenes are like co-written because um, you just took such a great ownership of that part and made it so much more uh, complex um, than I had originally envisioned her. And that was something, so we've been touring with the film. So the film premiered at Tribeca a year ago, and then we've played, you know, 20 something festivals. Um, and so many people have come up afterwards uh, and said, you know, oh, I've, I've never seen someone like Cheryl on screen before, but I know so many Cheryls in real life, which for me just, just huh. sort of like the, that's the highest compliment you can get after a screening. Um, yeah, that's right. which was awesome, which I never told you I realized. Um, so yeah. this, uh, so we shot in New Mexico, we shot in and around Albuquerque, sort of within like a two hour radius, um, except for the last scene of the movie, which is like a four hour drive at White Sands. Um, and so Sabrina, uh, 
Nola's sturdiness and her self-sufficiency, you know, it's not something that uh, we see in a lot of movies about women, unfortunately, but also I feel like what you did something that was so incredible of also being able to show her vulnerability because Nola is someone who knows she's sort of wise beyond her years, but also she's been incredibly sheltered in how she's been raised. Um, so how did you approach those dual sides as both when we were prepping and then when we were on set? I think as far as the prep work went, you know, I think you and me just kind of talking through it as much as we did and making sure that we understood um, all the ins and outs of her and her mind and where she probably would be at 17 years old, but, but being raised in the way that she did. Um, I always saw her as more of an observer. And I think especially with her dad who had this uh, luminous personality, they were kind of a yin and a yang for each other. Um, and so I think that as far as when, uh, when he was there with her, she kind of didn't really need to be like, she didn't, she, she, she liked observing him and she liked kind of letting him be um, the funny one and the charismatic one. And, and she was, like you said, she was very sturdy in herself and her strength and in her silence. Um, and I think you start to see the vulnerability uh, show a little bit more throughout the movie because she's starting to have to encounter these people and deal with these things completely on her own. Whereas like, I always find it really interesting, even in, in uh, the initial scene in the car with Clint and Nola. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it, but you guys just watched the movie. So when he he's uh, dies, um, <laughs> she's very still. And I, and I, she's, she's very much doesn't know how to process her emotions at that point, because I don't think, um, I don't think she's ever been super comfortable with expressing her emotions so openly. Um, so that's why I do love seeing the story of her kind of grow and develop and start to accept those emotions and, and realize that they're okay. Um, and I think for me, it was never really like such an overthought process of like, oh, she needs to be like this here and this here. It was, it was really just accepting whatever I was given in the moment. And, and especially with the incredible other actors that I worked alongside with in this film, it was, it was very easy to just kind of be living in her shoes and, and taking every day as it was um, and experiencing her just by living in her shoes. Um, so again, Nola's a G. Um, I, I love her and I think, I think she is very complex and nuanced. And someone asked me a question not too long ago about like where would Nola be um, when she's 30 years old? And I thought that was a really interesting question which when we get off of this, Ani, I'll probably ask you what you think about that because I'm curious. That's the sequel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, question for you. Um, so you and Nola's, Sabrina's character, Nola, have um, a wide age difference and yet feel like peers a lot of the time. Um, and how did you build that relationship? Because you both had such a sort of a deep mutual understanding of each other. Uh, I think my daughter helped me with that. I <laughs> just like, uh, they're about the same age, I think. But, uh, I, I, I have to say that, uh, Sabrina's really easy to work with. It's like, she's a, it's, uh, it was, uh, the minute I met her, it's like, like you meet people sometimes and then you just feel like you've known them for a long time and they're not, like instant best friends, but they're immediately in the circle. And uh, that was that was it. The two, watching this, I gotta say that uh, I watched this movie with about five or six guys. And there's two parts that, uh, the first one was when she dumped all the clothes in the, in the box, all these clothes, and then she breaks down. The other one was when she met mom, and uh, at first it was kind of here. I'll leave this, and then I'll go, and then, and then when uh, when she met her, and she started crying, we started crying. We had five guys here talking about, 
hey, baseball, uh, let's play some football, guys. Because uh, we nobody, because we everybody would have started crying. Just let the tears flow. <laughs> let them out, Heavy. Danny. Well, if I, we'd have been alone, we could have. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, a group cry, best a, cry. I've got to say, I've got to say that like uh, that was those two scenes were just really amazing. The whole movie was was awesome. I don't. You could ask my kids. I never sit that long between them in a movie that doesn't have, you know, chaos, murder, and killing, and. I sat through the whole thing. It was just kind of like, like I said, one of my top five. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the poll quote we need on the poster from Danny himself. Steven, this next question is for you. Um, and it has to do with the van, with the Hulk, the real star of the movie. Um, because Hulk. you, of everyone, spent maybe the most time in it. Um, so what was it like shooting inside the van? But weren't we the only one shooting in the van? I mean, I think we spent the most time in it because we were the only ones in it. Or the That's most. True. I feel like you and Ryan have like a deep, you developed a deep bond in that van. Ryan sourced our van for us and was our sort of our, our onset uh, van guru. Yes, it was. I mean, it is one of those things that, I mean, Sabrina touched on it earlier regarding not having a, uh, you know, being super familiar with van life. Uh, and so when you start to read up about it and you start to, to, you know, understand it a bit better and, and then you get in this vehicle and you look around and you're like, wow, yeah, sleeping here for years. Like this is not a big mobile home. This is a van, uh, and 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 it's 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 cool. I mean, it's it's very interesting to see that that part. And uh, you know, honestly, my favorite part of the van is I always love being hooked up to a rig and pretending to drive. That's my favorite memory of the Hulk. Is when you have to. I'm always very aware of actors not looking when they're being pulled because I was concerned, of course, I don't drive stick or anything. I was like, is it a stick? Am I gonna be able to drive it? And then just being towed. I love just being towed and pretending to drive. <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments of the Hulk. Like, was the only one who could actually drive the van. Like, oh my, to I mean, her credit, nobody else we... could drive except for Maggie. When we were at I that house and we were at the swimming pool, I was so frightened to run and to jump in this van and to just drive down the hill. Right. I was like, ah, I don't know if I could do this. Yeah, that was harder than the swimming pool stunt. Just yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'll jump on off and drive the roof, but I don't know if I can turn this van on and drive it straight down the street. I need a stunt double for this. Maggie I'll jump off the roof, train. but I need a stunt double. Yeah, bless you. Um, so Maggie, what was it like for you, A, driving the van, but B, also building that connection <laughs> with Sabrina and developing that, you know, that relationship where essentially you're, you're strangers um, and yet you're family too? Um, well, first of all, driving the van was super fun. I, you know, I learned how to drive stick shift and I haven't gotten to do it in a long time. And when I was a kid learning how to drive, I just loved driving and I loved driving stick shift. So when I saw that van and you were like, no one can drive the van, I was like, I can drive that van. And I really, I really loved it. It was super fun. Um, you know, in a way like meeting Sabrina on set, not knowing her before and playing the roles that we were playing is it's sort of like a um, it's sort of like a perfect situation. You know, they are strangers and yet they're sitting there trying to penetrate each other and glean as much as they can and find their points of commonality or kinship or genetic information. And 
you know, it's not unlike acting with a person for the first time where you're like locking eyes and you're really trying to connect and you're like, where do we meet? How do we find each other? Can we play, you know? And Sabrina is such a beautiful actress and such an open person, you know, then it was just sort of like, um, I don't know, it's, you know, sh her as an actor and her as a character are very easy to fall in love with. I think. And so for Cheryl, you know, that, that brought up a lot of like natural things to fall into and to push against. Um, so it was, it was easy in a lot of ways. I think it's actually much harder to walk into roles or walk onto film sets where you're supposed to have like a lifelong relationship with a person and make that believable on day one. Yeah. Now that, that makes a lot of sense. This Jaysha, this next one's for you. Um, what do you hope about Blue's story kind of resonates with audiences and, um, you know, that you hope they, they sort of carry with them after the film? Yeah, I mean, like you said before, like Blue is someone who has like a lot of hardships in her life and especially at that young of, a, of an age, like, you know, she, with her dad and with, like, losing her mom, like, she could be doing, like, a lot of things, but she, you know, she hangs around, like, the shop, and, you know, she formed this friendship with Nolan. She, you know, she helped her, like, in a way, like, helped her find her mom. So I think, like, she was able to, like, um, how do I say this? Like, she was, able, I don't know, she was, like, really like positive about things and I hope that like you know when people like see the film like it doesn't matter like what you go through like as long as you like know what you want and like, know that things will get better and you know she yeah pretty much yeah. I love that um so this next question is from the audience what was your favorite on-set memory this is for anybody. I have one. I'm going to chime in. Um, Ani, do you remember when we were filming at the garage and that guy was playing his music way too loud outside of his house and Danny Trejo went and whistled outside his house and told him to turn his music off. We're trying to film a movie. And the guy was like, anything for you, Machete? And literally just stopped. And then we were able to film, like it was no problem. And I was like, thank God Danny Trejo was here. Otherwise we would have never finished the movie. That would have been a bummer. Yeah, this guy was blasting music. And we were like, okay, who's gonna have to go knock on his door? Danny crosses six lanes of highway traffic in like the middle of Albuquerque, knock on this guy's door. And this guy was like, I'll turn it down, but you have to sign a picture for me. Do you remember that? And you autographed yeah. this portrait of him. We had to get our department printed out some headshot of yours like as quickly as they could. So good. Yeah, that was uh, that was, was kind of cool. Yeah, that's just a Tuesday for Danny. That's uh, so funny. Does anybody else have any good, what, good? I mean, I have so many I could go on forever, but. I have to say one of my favorite I, it was, uh, as happens a lot, some of the favorite moments don't necessarily make it. But when Sabrina, when you and I, and we had that night on top of the van, the stars. Uh -huh. Unreal. Was, yeah, it was just I really look, beautiful. I and it was also that whole thing about the octopus and at the time I was reading books about octopus and that, just everything, how it tied in and then the, the, the darkness and the, the, the stars and you and I just kind of hanging out with of course the crew, but it, it was just something about that, that evening I thought was really, that was one of my favorite moments. It was just a really beautiful time to spend together, regardless if anyone got to see it or experience it. It's like, those are the moments where you're just like, what's your favorite moment? That was my favorite yeah. moment. It was a really beautiful Visually, evening. There's been like very few like nights that you can like see a sky that looks like that. Um, and it was great. Yeah, you captured it. I mean, honey, 
and Kaylin captured it beautifully. Um, but that was that was yeah, beautiful. It's all Kaylin. I'm not. I can't all take Kaylin. any credit for that. Kaylin, you know, yeah. shot the movie and also one of the producers, um, and is also my partner in crime in our production company. And did a great uh, job. Wherever she goes, I go. It's amazing. <laughs> um, question from the audience, Sabrina and Jay Sean, how did you two prepare for your roles? <laughs> Jay Sean, you went through this one first. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it was my, it was my second film. So, you know, and it was my first film, especially like working with like, you know, big time actors. So it was really like, I was extremely nervous at first, but I think like, you know, I really had to like think about, you know, my character as it is. And I had to think about, okay, so what, as a, as a person, like what would she do? And I really had to, you know, put myself in her shoes and yeah. And I, and like working with Sabrina, it was insane, especially as, you know, watching her for so long and like actually being able to film with her was Amazing. And to Jay Sean's credit, Jay Sean showed up. Jay Sean left her prom. Yeah. Got on a plane. I remember that. The day after prom is, yeah. 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 And you were like, oh, I'm okay. I'm just a little tired. I'm just going to take a little nap. And then I'll, I'll just show up. <laughs> like, what? Uh, and, I, and I had to wake up at five in the morning that morning. Like, four hours of sleep and yeah, it's insane. That's true. Dude. The life of a star. Yeah. Literally. The Hollywood life. Um, I love you, Jay Sean. You're the best. It also made it so easy. Like those scenes with, with Nola and Blue were, were just, it literally just felt like I was, I was uh, hanging out with a young, well, obviously not my best friend because they didn't know each other too well, but there was a sense of familiarity, familiarity um, and comfort between them that was really unspoken. And I think like, um, and Stephen touched on this a little bit, but so much of what is beautiful about this film is, is in the moments of silence and is in the moments of expression um, that we can't really put into words, uh, which is why I always, I, I, I say like the way that I prepared for NOLA was honestly like, Albuquerque was my accessory in every way, shape and form. I think uh, the setting that we were in told a lot of the story and gave me a lot of the reactions that I was feeling naturally. I think it was just a place personally that I had never spent time in um, and telling a story that I personally never thought I'd be so, so lucky to be part of telling. Um, so I think all those new experiences and first like learning how to work on cars when I cannot drive still um, and learning how to siphon gas and learning like all these little, all these little things that, that I, that I never, um, that I never knew before. I never thought that I'd need to learn uh, kind of naturally put me in the headspace of, <laughs> of, of Nova and this complicated life that she was living. Um, and not to mention, I, like I said, playing off of, Maggie and Danny and Jay Sean and Steven, uh, each of their personalities and characters were so clear um, that that Nola had to almost be something that could, uh, I guess, complement all of them and and be able to um, fit well together or not fit well together. And, and that's why you see at the end of the movie, she 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 kind of keeps going and kind of is comfortable with herself and, and searching for what she's whatever she's looking for um, because of all the people that have changed her in some sort of way. Uh, this next question is a good one for Maggie actually, um, because this is about shooting in New Mexico and sort of like the incredible um, locations that are there. But Maggie and I actually met in New Mexico because you're already there at the time and you've spent a lot of time there. But I don't know yeah. that you had ever, had you ever shot a movie there before? Uh, no, I'd, ne I'd never shot a movie there, but my, my in-laws live there. So my husband and I, um, we go there with some regularity, but what was the question? Did I miss the question? Oh, just um, New Mexico as a character in the movie and 
what that sense oh, of yeah. place brought to the story. Yeah, you know, it's funny, like the desert landscape really is so specific and it and it is so opening, but I feel like every scene we shot, I, I was, the landscape um, like intruded itself. I'm sure you felt that, Sabrina, you shot way longer and much more outside than I did, but I just remember like, you know, shooting inside the van one night and the wind was crazy and, you know, in the scene where we said goodbye, the co the cotton trees were like, it was the time of year where they were shedding their um, their leaves. And I don't know if it was, it was some, some white fuzzy thing. Anyway, I just felt like the landscape was always there in every scene we shot. And it's just, you know, it, if, I think to some people it feels sort of barren and forbidding and to other people it feels like opening and majestic and, um, I don't know. It's a very, I don't know. It's it's a very magical landscape, I think, and and the light is incredible. Like I I can only imagine that for you, Ani, and um, yeah, that it must have been sort of exciting that light. Yeah, it's it's gorgeous there. Anyone who, well, whenever we're allowed to start making movies again, go make them in New Mexico. It's basically just like one big ad for the tourism board. Danny, um, our last question, um, what uh, surprised you about the script or, you know, or, or watching the movie now from when you read it? What was the biggest surprise for you seeing it on screen for the first time? I, uh, like I said, the biggest surprise was that the fact that I, I really sat through it. I, I don't, I don't, I like, I've all done nothing but action movies. I've, you know, most of the time when uh, they've taken me to a drama, uh, I'll be asked to leave the theater because I'll, I'll be like laughing or, or saying, Oh, he's going to kiss her now, you know, or something. But, but, uh, uh, I, I was just really happy with it. I was I was happy with the whole movie. And like I said, it's like a, I'm watching with five guys, you know, and uh, nobody usually somebody will say something, try to be funny, you know. But it's uh, it's got a great hook, and uh, I love the fact that uh, Sabrina's character had like a, like perseverance. You know, I mean, how many people could could that happen to you on the road and, uh, you know, her carry on? It was like just a, an amazing, uh, I, I don't know, an, an amazing uh, American kind of story, you know, just uh, perseverance, chutzpah. I think that's the word. <laughs> yeah, chutzpah. <laughs> I love that. Um, well, thank you all so, so, so much um, for watching this movie around the globe, across time zones. Um, it really means the world to us. You know, we would never have been able to fit all of you in a movie theater. So the, this is not the release we ever would have anticipated, but it's it just feels so special. And um, if you, like the movie, please share it far and wide. It'll be out tomorrow on demand and uh, everywhere digitally. And so please, you know, spread the word um, because that's how, you know, this, this movie will be able to have its impact. Uh, and you can find out more at our website, www.shorthistorylongroad.com or on our social media handles. And now we have an exciting, exclusive blooper reel to close us out for the evening. So thank you everybody for your time, for your attention, for being a part of this. Thank you all. I started writing this movie five years ago and it came out better than I ever would have expected. Thank you, Ani, you're, you're the best, best. Besos. Well done, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>
This is the hot dog song. <laughs> is that a roadrunner? <laughs> is it? I it's heard they fly. Is it? No. Oh. It's a bird. Okay. I just really want to see a roadrunner. What do you want? Take two. Marker. I guess this looks like a kidnapping, it doesn't it? <laughs> what? VW Westfall. Alright, so just kidding. But what do I drive? I got my hot dog now. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Oh, stop it. Flatter you stop it. Her. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so short. Life is so short. Come on. Life is so short. Come on. Life is so short. I actually don't know how to drive this car, so I can't. I can't. Tonight, to celebrate the Hulk being out of our lives to new beginnings. To celebrate the Hulk being out of our lives to new beginnings. <laughs> I'm not floating for some reason. It's because I'm a witch. Okay, 1984 VWS Hall, yeah. God bless everybody. And God bless you, Donnie Dim. Sure. 14 Alpha, take one. <laughs>I am, and that just made me feel so good. That just made my fucking day. Oh, that was real cute.